Hello students and welcome to Crop Science 6049. Today we are going to look at the Catena effect and soil color. By the end of this lesson, you must be able to describe the Catena effect and discuss the significance of soil color in crop production. So first of all, let's take a look at the Catena effect or the Catena concept. Let's start off by defining what a soil catena is. A soil catena is a sequence of soils derived from the same parent material but differ due to topographic positions they occupy. A soil catena consists of the crest, the upper slope, the lower slope, and the valley bottom. Let's take a look at the crest position. Soils at the crest position are often shallow and with rock outcrop. If you go at or near the top of a hill, you would notice that the soil that is there is shallow or is skeletal or is not fully formed and the profiles there are not deep. If you dig down, you can easily reach the bedrock. Next, we have the upper slope. It is a sufficient rainfall penetration which prompts weathering and development of a deep profile. The site is well drained and water moves internally and carries bases downslope. The soil is mostly composed of stable iron oxides and hence red color at the top and turning brown at the bottom. So the soils at the upper slope, they have got a red color. The reason why they have a red color is because there is enough drainage and there is a lot of runoff. That runoff causes a lot of leaching and there is carrying of materials in sediment form. When the leaching occurs, it carries bases, which therefore means that the soils at the upper slope have a low pH, because the bases that causes the soil to be basic would have been washed away leaving the soil acidic. However, the soils there, because there is a lot of weathering, the soils that are there are deep as compared to the crest position. Let's look at the lower slope. At this site, the soil experiences seasonal water logging. The soil is brown at the top and turning yellow at the bottom due to the iron oxides being reduced. So occasionally, there is water logging. If the rain season experiences more rainfall, that area may experience water logging. That area is not as steep as the area above it. Hence, water may accumulate and saturate the soil. And that causes the soil to become brown and then turn yellow as we go down the lower slope. Next, we have the valley bottom. The soil is permanently waterlogged and iron is reduced. There is a little stream flow and poor drainage which encourages accumulation of bases, organic matter and the presence of swelling. Clay combine with organic matter to produce black soils. And soils that are permanently wet will be gray in color. Actually, the valley bottom is a little bit flat as compared to the lower slope and other slopes. As we go up the slope, so there will be water logging and that results in the formation of a stream. That water logging causes the soils to become black or gray and also at the valley bottom there is a lot of deposition of the material that has been washed up the slope. And also there is a lot of denitrification due to poor water drainage. Now let's take a look at soil color. Soil color provides a valuable insight into the soil environment. It is important in assessing and also classification of soil. The main soil colors are black, brown, gray, yellow, white, red, glade, green, and the list just goes on. Soil color is influenced or determined by organic matter, 
parent rock or the parent material, nature and abundance of iron, and also moisture content of the soil. Now let's take a look at how parent rock influences soil color. Parent rocks are broken down to form soils and sometimes give the color of the soil. So at times the parent rock from which the soil was formed will impart its color to the soil that is formed from it. Next we want to look at how organic matter influences soil color. Humus, the final stage of organic matter breakdown is black and throughout the stages of organic matter breakdown, the color imparted varies from brown to black. Sodium influences the depth of soil color of organic matter and also of the soil. Sodium causes organic matter to disperse and spread all over the soil, making it look darker. So, Organic matter imparts a dark color to a soil. And that dark color is very, very important, especially when it comes to the absorption of heat from the sun and warming up the soil. We also have the nature and the abundance of iron. Red, yellow, gray, and bluish gray colors result from iron in its various forms. Under average conditions of air and moisture, iron forms yellow oxide, imparting a yellow color to the soil. Where soils are well draining, under dry conditions, iron forms red oxides, imparting a red color to the soil. In waterlogged soils with lack of air, iron forms a reduced state, giving the soil gray green or bluish colors. Now we want to look at how water determines the color of the soil. Soil color darkens as soil changes from dry to moist. Careful observation of color can help to identify problems of water logging and leaching. Poorly drained soils are often dominated by blue to gray colors with the yellow mottles. Well-drained soils will usually have bright and uniform colors. Now let's interpret soil colors. Soil colors tell a story about the soil. If you note a color of a soil, you must be able to tell what is happening within that soil. So what does a black color tell us about that soil? A black soil color is often associated with high organic matter, but this is not always the case. Organic matter, as we have noted, darkens the soil. But a soil may be dark because of the parent material from which it was formed. The soils have water logging and drainage problems, especially vertical. So a black color may tell a farmer that the soil is water logging or drainage problems. It also shows that the soil has low pH and high denitrification. And in case of vertisols, there is workability and tillage problems. So a black color is often associated with water logging and drainage problems. And if there is water logging, there is high denitrification. And also if there is water logging, there may be leaching of bases, resulting in very low pH. Now, let's take a look at white, pale, or bleached soil colors. In subsoil, it is due to leached calcium carbonates, iron and manganese particles, which have been leached due to large amounts of rainfall, leaving the soil white, pale, or bleached. It also indicates leaching of nutrients and low available water. Now, let's take a look at what the red color tells us about a soil. It indicates good drainage. Iron within the soil is oxidized more readily due to high oxygen content. It causes the soil to have rusty colors. So if the soil is well drained, it means oxygen content in that soil is high 
and that results in the oxidation of iron that is present within that soil resulting in the red color. The color indicates that in the soil there is high phosphorus fixation and low plant available water. There is low plant available water because of high drainage. Now let's take a look at yellow to brown soil colors. These soils often have poor drainage than red soils. The iron compounds of these soils are in a hydrated form and therefore do not produce a rusty color. They have moderate phosphorus fixation and low available water. Brown soil color. If a soil is brown, it is an indication of moderate organic matter and iron oxides. It also has moderate phosphorus fixation and low to moderate plant available water. What about green or gray soil colors? What do they tell us about the soil? This color is associated with very poor drainage and water logging. Lack of air in these soils provide conditions of iron and manganese to form compounds that give these soils their color. The soils have drainage problems and high denitrification. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you have any contribution, please write them in the comment section. If this lesson has benefited you, click the like button.